Hello everyone. Um, yeah, I hope you remember who I am. If not, Genghis here. Uh, and welcome back to my YouTube channel after a long while, or a little while. Just before we get into this 3090 and this game in particular, just want to answer a couple of questions which spring up on stream a lot and I would assume are also going to in the comment section of this uh, yeah, video if I don't answer them first. So, uh, am I playing the Clan Wars campaign? And the answer to that is yes I am, I'm playing that in Hoot and I'm really happy and I'm also leading that, uh, especially in the first half of the campaign because towards the end I'm going to have some exams. But yeah, I'm leading and you're going to see that on YouTube where time progresses too, although not straight away. Um, so I'm hoping you look forward to that. Second, am I reviving Omni? No, I'm not. And B, is anyone else reviving Omni? Sadly, right now it doesn't look like it either. And uh, last question I'm gonna answer, which I'm pretty sure would also happen otherwise, is uh, why did I go in? Uh, and what happened there is that go in kicked me for inactivity without any message or warning or anything. And uh, by the way, I'll be back one month later, after which I said like, are you serious? That's pretty much the situation there. Um, and yeah, I'm happy in Hoot, if that's, I guess, maybe the fault. Anyway, back to this game. As you can see, we're in the 3090, we're on Sand River, uh, not an airfield, obviously. I go to this position, which I really enjoy, because it gives you some really nice early spots on Heavy's Crossing here. Although it's, I guess, not the best matchmaking to get shots on the cross and the T4. Oh no, actually the enemy 90 stop me from getting any shots in. I'm gonna go middle because, oh, I don't know, I feel like with one RT and whatnot you can freely decide where you want to go on this map, middle or balcony. This tends to be a bit more mobile. Um, and yeah, get a nice shot to that guy, although I'll admit I don't quite know how it hit either. But the T28 and hope my RT is gonna show them. And notice I can't do much here. I'm gonna talk a bit, um, by the way, about the difference between this 90 and the old 90 and uh, also how the new 90 is in general while, you know, commenting the game. Give you a bit of a tank review. I got the um, 90 really recently, like just a week ago or something. I didn't like most of the tier 9 light changes like, compared to the trades in general. I had a lot of fun actually with the new tier 9 rule. Uh, but for example the lightweight really kind of disappointed me. And then the tier 10 is even more so. But the 90 really has been great. Um, just describe the old 90, I guess, real quick, just so that those of you who maybe haven't played this game in a while, or just wonder if a cooperation or whatnot, I'll know what I'm talking about before I go into that. The old 90 had uh, six shots, and also so that those of you who've maybe played the old one but not the new one understand more what the changes are. The old 90 had six shots, it had AP as standard, not APCR, uh, which also had way less pen, I think 175. It had way worse gun handling, and yeah, like I said, it had six shells. Um, and that basically led to a very, very different place now. Like, the changes really sound like less than they are, but in practice the changes between the old 90 and the new 90 really pay out quite massively. You can see the enemies are pushing right there right now, and they're also putting on pressure here, so I think if I want to carry this game I should run away right now, because if I stay here I might very well just be caught in a bad crossfire and not be able to run, and I can get some... There you can see I decide to run away. So the old 90, basically what you wanted to do is rush an enemy, get in their side or in their back, and uh, give them a full clip of damage and hopefully kill them with that, and then run away and reload, which would take you around 40 seconds, by the way, right, to reload an entire clip. Um, if you really had to, you could, well, you could definitely wear a decent scout with the old 92, that's, I guess, quite undeniable. And if you really had to, you could still kind of snipe, I guess, because you still had a decent damage output, you know, while you were clipping, like in that time period, even if you weren't hitting all shots or something. If you hit 3 shots out of the 12 seconds that you're clipping, it's still not too bad. What you really didn't want to do is do any snapshotting, because you had a really long reload of your clip. You didn't want to do any like mid-range sniping where you kind of shoot twice and then have to reload because you get spotted and that kind of stuff. Because, again, you wanted to make sure you kind of get rid of your clip and the damage. Uh, and if you only do 1 or 2 shots of damage and then have to reload for 36 or 40 seconds, it's just really not worth it, right? And compared to that, the new 90 really plays really, really different in my eyes. Um, the changes are that you've got APCR standard, which also has around 30 more pin. Obviously the pin also helps because uh, of you being a tier higher. But the APCR has obviously way better shell velocity. And at the same time, you've got way, way better gun handling. And then you've got two other changes which matter a lot. Namely, you've got a better interclip, so that's the redo time you know, between shots inside of a clip. And a better interclip basically means that 
well, it's easier to perma track enemies, right? It's easier to get in like two or three shots in instead of just one or two. And um, yeah, mainly that really. It's easier to get in, in yeah, three or four shots instead of two or three in the, in the previous situation. But the better gun hunting in the APCR ammo, and right now the game looks quite decent, so I'm going to move up and try and come behind that T30 maybe. So it's a bit risky with that suppression there, right? Um, and he, I think, spots me right now. Um, so it means that on one hand, you are way worse at going in and clipping people. Because you are tier higher on average, and you have two less shots of damage, you don't even have more HP or anything. You really can't do much with a thousand alpha this year. Like, you bounce one shot, you only do 720 damage. And bouncing one shot, even if you, you know, try and pay attention to your shooting, can happen with that kind of pen. It really doesn't give you the power to do that. And at first, I really thought that the 90 just got nerfed, basically. And I, I didn't... That's a big part of the reason I didn't play it for a long time after... Um, yeah, I could change to T9, because I just felt, eh... Uh, you know, like, that gun handling was so bad, what I meant to do with the 90 was four shells and whatnot. But I really was wrong, and I really would recommend you get this tank a bit. Um, if you like this tank based on general, because instead of playing like a worse 90, it plays like a way more fun TVP, if you ask me. What do I mean by that? The TVP is basically a really, really good mid range damage dealer because it's got great accuracy and, and uh, soft stats. And yeah, it's able to put out 1200 damage in uh, just 4.5 seconds, right? Well, I'm able to clip this ISU. Not even take one shot in return, and I'm gonna have to run them. Um, but the the TVP is huge. It's got no camo and it's got no armor, which makes it very much so a second line sniper, because you can't do anything else. That's what I mean by very much so. The 3990 is also a second line sniper, as you can see, for example, here, right? This is literally the definition of second line sniper. I'm quite close to the front line. But I'm not getting spotted, I'm not actually prodding, I'm basically sniping. Um, and that's repression. But at the same time, you've got you drive nearly 70, so you can really move from one flank of the map to the other. Also, at the same time, you're way smaller, and you've got way better camo. So you've got way higher survivability, you can go way close to the enemies. You're also, right, you're not, yeah, I guess, <laughs> height is actually part of smaller, so, uh, duh. But yeah, right, being way flatter allows you to go in positions where in the TPP you just can't go. Um, and that allows you to just have way more fun because you can still do, for example, the, the kind of TPP playstyle which is at second line sniping. But you're also still a really good scout in 1390, I would say so. You've got really good camo and decent enough your range. Uh, you're really good at camping in a bush, but yeah, nothing stops you from scouting more actively too. I'm clipping that super pressure, and I think this is one of the mistakes I did this game, like this clip here. It ends up working pretty decent, could I get in like three shots and only take one every turn? And before I talk more, I want to talk about something real quick. I think the standard reaction for like 90% of people in this situation, I'm standing here, I shoot that guy, I'm on reload, is hug this area, so that way I'm safe from that guy and I'm safe from anything here, right? I think that's what many of you would have done. Look what I do. I make sure I stay unspotted, stay as low as possible, or get unspotted, rather. Right, for now it's just spotted by the super crushing. And move, really. That's my focus, move. And that is why I needed to move. If I would have stayed here, the RT would have just pre-aimed on me, uh, and at least done damage to me, if not outright killed me. I'm convinced of that. They reload, way easier shot, and so on. By moving, I managed to dodge the RT shell. By now, I'm also unspotted, and I can now move up here and then take out the RT. But yeah, back to the, to the 90, you're also able, and that's what I really find the fun part of the 90, is to find new mid-range positions, which you would not use in any other, or nearly any other tank. Because, on one hand, you're small enough, and you have the camo and whatnot to survive in those positions, I don't know. Think, for example, next to the middle in Erlenberg, those kind of positions, right, in the housings, playing, playing around the bushes and the houses and so on there. Obviously, there are two or three positions you can go to in other tanks too, but in general, it tends to be a rather risky thing. Well, in the 90, you're good enough of, of, of a spotter to not get outspotted, and maybe even get some spotting damage from your team on one side. On the other side, you've also got an autoloader, and that makes a big difference, for example, for to a 90, uh, not to a 90, to a lightweight from those kind of positions. If you see an enemy crossing somewhere, you can do three, four shots of damage, you know? You're not limited of doing one shot of damage those three, four times an enemy peaks, and that's what often leaves you feeling kind of unsatisfied, or makes those positions not viable, 
uh, in a lightweight or whatnot because you don't get enough damage. Oh, in a 90 you can do 3 or 4 shots on the time that an enemy crosses uh, any position and that kind of stuff. Which, yeah, really changes a lot of gameplay in that sense. And yeah, you still have the speed at the end to go flank. And obviously at this point in the game, even my 4 shots start becoming dangerous. So TLDR, light, uh, no, 3090 great tank, yes. Right now I'm trying to go for the ass of the T30, right? The game got really close. Um, I know I wasn't talking too much about it. Tell me if you like that or not in the commentaries, I guess. I bounced the first show unluckily. That second show was obviously entirely garbage. But yeah, I decided I need to go for him and take him out right now. I pin the first show on his side and make sure I aim the second one quite well on his lower plate. And then I just run. It's now a 1v1 by the way. And yeah, the third is probably coming for me. I just need to run, 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 run. As you can see, I'm also needing out of ammo. And uh, while I was talking a lot about a lot of different things. Why is chat bugging like that now? That's funny. Um, I got up to 5.2k damage and 4 kills, which I would say is not too bad. But I definitely want to make sure I bring this, this um, carry home. And I guess here at the end is also actually, a, you're going to see what I guess makes this tank more fun than a, than a TVP. If I want a TVP in this situation or in any other medium, right? I would have to be really careful because sure I have better camo and mobility and free range than a T30, but actually not by much. Like if I'm kind of peeking in the open, I'm not actually behind a bush. Most likely the T30 spots me and I spot him too. For example here, right? T30 most likely would have spotted me if I'm in a TVP standing out. But since I'm in a 90, I'm just way more safe in a lot of ways. Enemies can't snapshot me because I'm not sure, so they have to aim that bit longer. Uh, I'm way faster, so in that short time period I can get safe. Or even they just miss me because I'm small. Or in the first place they don't even spot me because I'm smaller so it's easier to fit in a bush. Or just I have better camo so it's way harder to spot me. Just to put it in perspective, I think I checked a 90, 3090 with a decent camo crew. Shooting or on the move has better camo than an I7 standing still not shooting. I'm not 100% sure about the tanks anymore, but uh, definitely cheered and heavy in the 90. So just to go to show you like really how strong the camo is on the 90 or in general on the lights, I guess. Um, and yeah, I'm going to talk about that a bit, again, again, a bit more, I guess. I see the T30 there, right? Um, he gets spotted, he doesn't spot me, so the logical reaction for him is to just be scared and not move. Because he got spotted but he didn't die, so he must have done something right, but he doesn't want to move because he got spotted, right? So he's going to stay in that general area, that's just an assumption I can do. So that's why I decided that I instantly want to go here, because here there's both these bushes here and over there, right, where I actually shot from. Which have a pretty high probability of at least allowing me to spot him, right? Like, the first, my first goal is to keep eyes on him. As long as I know where he is, I know that I can win in the long or mid run because I'm a scout and he's a TD, so I can just keep moving around him. And as long as I know where he is, I can outplay him. So yeah, my focus is first get over there. I'm gonna pause it real quick. Get in the bush to spot him, and I even get lucky a bit, and I managed to get in the shot. I was hoping I would get in the shot, but obviously that wasn't guaranteed. But it was the most important thing to just lock him down and keep him spotted. I got in the shot, and he found out where I was, so obviously I had to move again. And where was the logical position to go? Well, somewhere else I can unspot him from. Where can I outspot him from, really, at this point, from this area, right? I'm, as you can see, it's nearly the max of the view range. So I'm quite safe, um, quite confident, rather, that he's not going to spot me. And as you can see, right, 296 meters and he doesn't spot me before shooting. And, uh, yeah, I should kill him. Let's have a look at the post-game stats, I guess. Bum, bum, bum. And uh, sorry if my voice slipped up one or two times video by the way. Ended up with an ace tanker, a hat confederate and a high caliber, which I guess is not too bad. Obviously a top gun would have been nice, but I think 5 kills and 5.6 and 5.7k damage is quite okay in a 2-9 game in a scout. Um, oh, I spotted only around 1000, I drove 6.6 kilometers, which I find to be quite edible really. Really goes to, to show you just how mobile you are and also and that's just one of those fun things about having an auto loader or having a clip compared to just a scout without a clip is that it gives you those 20 seconds where you're reloading anyway or you can just move a little bit and since you're a scout in 20 seconds you can move quite far so you can move around for example in the middle of the map quite a lot without losing any actual damage output but you still have an auto loader which is which is really nice because it allows you to do that burst but yeah I ended up losing 6000 credits because I fired nearly all of my gold shells but normally in my 90 I really hardly ever fire gold it's really not a tank I burn credits with, although I run coffee on So, yeah, I don't know, really fun tank. I would recommend you get yours. I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, tell me in the comments, I don't know, how you're doing, how you like this video. 
any tips and so on as always. And otherwise, I hope to see you all next time and maybe also on my stream because I'm a bit more active on my stream than my YouTube channel, which isn't too hard. But yeah, no, I've been streaming like uh, three, four, five times a week. Come by. See you everyone and.